Hello and congratulations on getting access to this video course on the blueprint to setting up smart one-time offers. So this is video number one, which is the introduction and quick overview. So when it comes to selling your products and services online, you need to ensure that your whole funnel converts. Everything from your lead magnet to your freebie, whatever you're using to build your list, to your front end offer and then to your one-time offer. So in other words, everything needs to be consistent and congruent. If it is not, then your funnel will not convert. But you'll get a better idea as I actually go through and show you step by step. Now, before we begin, we need to check your mindset. And then of course, after that, I'll give you a quick overview of the video course itself so you know exactly what to expect. All right, so let's talk about mindset. So most likely if you're watching this, you are open, but I wanna make sure that you remove any type of perceived notions or thoughts or assumptions that could potentially block you from actually achieving your goal. What I've noticed over time and time again is oftentimes it's not the strategy, but it's actually the mindset that is blocking it. And it's not just the, oh, I can't do this. It's other things that are actually coming into your mind that you don't even know that are, or are, are aware of that are blocking you. So I've seen too many times either product business owners or service-based business owners or any type of business owners, they often, not all, but some of them, a minority tends to say, I hate one-time offers. Anytime you think I hate one-time offers or I hate funnels or I hate this and that, those things can actually block you from achieving what you wanna achieve. You know, so I want to make sure that you throw that out the door so you can focus on the video course. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what we like. What matters is what our customers want. All right. So it's easier for me to say, put yourself in other people's shoes. But in reality, it's actually very hard to do unless you really remove those things out of your mind. And then it makes it easier. And then I'll give you some formulas that you can actually implement that will help you achieve that. Then on the flip side, you've got your customers. Now, if your customers are saying, I hate one-time offers, then that's a different thing. That's something that is clearly wrong with your sales funnel. Now, if one or people, two or people saying that, that's usually okay. But if you got three, four or five, Typically, the rule of thumb is if one person is saying that, then a hundred other people are just not saying it at all. They're just walking away annoyed. All right. So that is a good place to be because that will allow you to say, okay, what is wrong? What can I fix this? All right. So that's what we're going to do today. So now that we have covered that, let's talk about the video course itself and give you a quick overview of the course. So video number one is, of course, this particular video. Video number two is why you must have one time offers, which will be a basic video, but we'll set the tone for everything else. Video number three will be why most one time offers aren't converting. Video number four will be an overview of the smart one time offer and why they convert. So you have a better idea about how they convert and the fundamentals basically. And then of course, video number five, we're gonna dive into actually practical application. We'll take what you learned in the previous video and then apply that in video number five. So in video number five, we'll talk about how to create a funnel with smart one-time offers. So I'll actually get a lucid chart or a mind mapping software and break things down so you can visually see it. Video number six, we'll talk about Different examples will give you smart one-time offer, real example, and we'll relate it to products. And then in video number seven, we'll do something similar, but relate it to services. So if you have a product, you should have a better idea. If you have a service, you have a better idea there. And of course, last but not least, video number eight, we'll talk about different platforms, shopping cart systems that will actually help you achieve this. So we'll help you actually build out the one-time offers. So now that you have a better idea of that, here's what you need. You need a product or service. You need an open mind. You need the willingness to take action and you need a mind map software like lucidchart.com is what I'm going to be using. And I love that software or you can use a free mind mapping software. You can even use a paper and a pen if that suits you. Whatever helps you absorb this information better use that because different people are different. We got visual learners, we got auditory learners, and we have kinesthetic learners. So whatever works best for you is, 
is best. All right. So now that we've covered that, let's move on to video number two. Welcome back. This is video number two. And in this particular video, we will talk about why you must have one time offers. The purpose of this video is kind of to set the tone and to kind of get you into this headspace. So I really want you to think about this. Have you ever thought about how much one time offers can really make a difference? We're talking about the one time offers that are only revealed after you purchase a product. We're not talking about the McDonald's bump sale as as we call it where they say would you like fries with that or would you like to basically make it bigger we're talking about the one-time offers that people only see after they have said i trust you i've whipped out my wallet and i bought the front end offer so these are going to be a lot more high converting or have you just accepted because some other marketer or somebody else told you that they work so really what we're trying to do here is dissect them all right once you have a better understanding of them it just makes it easier now it's oftentimes good to look at whys different angles so you understand how to pinpoint the weaknesses in your funnel so even if your funnel is converting there's always room for improvement and that is the mindset that is going to get you far. So if you can kind of get into that headspace, then you're going to do wonders for your funnel. Now, when we did tests back in the day, we found that just adding, you know, an extra one or two one time offer can literally triple your sales if done right. If you follow this blueprint and you're making, let's say, a couple grand, you could potentially double that or triple that just by adding a one-time offer now obviously there's no guarantee but that's just something that we have found personally within our own tests and with our own experience so not having a one-time offer actually makes you rely solely on the front end offer and what happens to your mindset is this what ends up happening is that you are solely focused on the initial customer acquisition that you totally forget about your existing customers who have already proven themselves to want more from you. As long as you are you know, providing good quality, of course, they're gonna want to buy more from you assuming that you have solved your promise initially. Now that you think about that, how many one-time offers do you really need? Well, that depends on the problem that you're trying to solve. In other words, maybe instead of asking that question, you should ask, how much does it take? How many one-time offers does it take to help your customers solve their problems? Does it take one? Does it take two? Does it take three? Or does it take four? Now, of course, you don't want to get too many, or of course, that will just annoy the customer and anger them. So you want to do it in moderation and enough that will actually help solve their problems. Now, some customers may want a few one-time offers, such as they might want to do it themselves and then some customers might want to have you do it for them and they're willing to pay more money to do that so i want you to get kind of in that headspace and mindset it's just going to make things easier in building out your whole funnel all right with that said let's move on to the next video hello and welcome back this is video number three and we're going to talk about why most one-time offers are not converting and the reason why is this will help you pinpoint the weaknesses and that will help you create better one-time offers so before we can jump in and start mapping things out you need to understand why they're not converting all right so understanding this will allow you to get a better perspective of why your one-time offers may not be converting so you can make it better so otherwise you know if i just jump straight into showing you how to set up smart one-time offers what would happen is you would be blindly guessing and we want you to be successful, all right? So that's why we've kind of uh, mapped this video course out as it is. So most one-time offers don't convert simply because they are unrelated to the front end offer. And now while that does seem like a no brainer, that's a very, very common mistake. And that's fine if you, that's, that's you, that's totally fine because now you can improve it. But think about it for just a second. Let's say that you bought a course on how to save taxes. You're presented with a one-time offer, which is another course, which is how to run your business better, 
all right and i've seen this i've seen hundreds of one-time offers hundreds and tons of funnels and and this has happened and yes while they are related and you might have some folks buy into it because they are related they do run a business and most of the time business related taxes if it's personal taxes obviously it's not related but if it's business taxes then yes it is related and they might buy into that you might get one or two or a few people or even sometimes you might even get like five percent buy it but the fact of the matter is yes they are related and you might have some people buy it but it doesn't exactly solve the person's initial problem which is related to taxes business taxes let's say so a lot of times when people build funnels they start with lead magnet first then they build the front end offer and then they build the one-time offer but if you think about it if you do that it's very very hard to build exactly what people want you're gonna have to do it backwards and i'll show you in just a minute so this is wrong and i'll show you why in this mind map Okay, so I'm in Lucid Chart right now, and a typical or traditional funnel looks like this, or it's built like this. Typically, you start obviously with the lead magnet, and then of course you do a front end offer. And a lot of times, if you think about it, let's just do a lead magnet for the sake of the whole funnel. Of course, you're going to have several different lead magnets because you're trying to build your list. And lead magnet, if you aren't aware of what it is it's just a freebie that you're giving away for free in exchange for somebody's email address so the goal of this is to build a list of people who eventually want your funnel right now a lot of times people will just think okay what's a good lead magnet that I have or what can I put together and they'll just slap it together and next thing is they'll put together a front-end offer and they're thinking okay this is a really good front end offer that I, I can put together and the next thing they'll do is they'll think okay uh what kind of one-time offer can i put together and a lot of times they'll they won't even think about it they'll just say okay i've got this thing right and then they're thinking okay maybe i gotta put another one-time offer number two that's just a good offer right so my point is not a whole lot of thought is put into it or maybe there is a lot of thought that is put into it but it's just random right so the majority of one-time offers and the whole funnel is usually created this way and by doing it this way kind of in a very random way this is actually not good for your funnel because you how do you know if the progression from here will lead to here meaning if somebody buys this how do you know that is going to be exactly related to this exactly related to this and exactly related to this so that's what happens when you move from the front to the back so with the smart OTO we use a different method which I'll show you in just a minute hello and welcome back this is video number four and we're going to talk about an overview of the smart one time offer and why they convert. So at this point in time, you will understand why the traditional way of creating a one time offer is not converting. So now it's time to show you how to set up smart one time offers or one time offers that do convert. Now here, what we want to do is start brainstorming how you can implement the strategy into your own sales funnel to ensure that, you know, you give your customers what they want so here's the part where you actually put yourselves in their shoes but this process is going to make your life a lot easier i wish i knew this uh, when i was setting up one-time offers back in the day and then i when i figured this out i was like wow i was actually doing it the hard way so referring back to the example in the previous video taxes the way a smart one-time offer works is to ensure that it is actually related to your original offer now you might be thinking well that's a no-brainer you know i do that all the time or that should be easy but really let's let's just take this as an example so to recap if the front end offer is how to save money on taxes and we we established previously that it was business taxes so how to save money on business taxes 
And if the one-time offer was, let's say, a review, a manual review by a CPA of your taxes and what you could potentially be leaving on the table, then yes, they are more likely to say, yes, I want that. Because with the front-end offer, they bought that because they know that they may be losing money on the table and they're not saving money. So they bought the course on how to save money on taxes. So having a, a review of that would be good, right? That would be related. Now, a lot of times, how do you get to that point? Well, there are many different directions or angles and different types of one-time offers that you can create. So what I want to do is just give you some examples. We're not going to focus too much on this, but I'm going to give you some examples so that way you can kind of begin to brainstorm what you might want to do. Now, if people are buying the initial offer, the question is, will they pay more to have it done for them or would they rather do it themselves? So a lot of times you'll find people, they'll buy your course or they'll buy your digital product or you'll, they'll buy your service, but they're either on one side or one end. They'll either want to do it themselves or they want it done for you. It's really hard to know. So a lot of times if you can offer a mixture of those in your funnel, you'll actually get higher conversions especially if you know that the person buying it has a limited amount of time and at the end of the day, they would rather you do it for them. So knowing this answer to this question can really help you create one-time offers that actually sell like hotcakes. Now, while we could talk about different angles all day, you know, like I said earlier, let's get back to the smart one-time offer. So how do you ensure that people who go through your lead magnet buy your front-end offer and then buy the majority of your one-time offers. Now, this is simple. What we need to do is we need to work backwards. And while I know this doesn't really make a lot of sense right now, it will. So like I said earlier, keep an open mind. Do not assume anything. Do not assume or bring in any type of preconceived notions. Just kick that out right now. So I'm going to show you literally how to hack your funnel conversions by working backwards. So what we need to do is we need to start with your biggest, best one-time offer, meaning what you love only your best buyers to buy. Out of a thousand buyers, you might only have like 400 buyers buy everything, or you might only have 200 buyers buy everything. But I want you to think it closely what do you want those 200 or those premium buyers to buy, right? So what is your biggest, baddest, best one-time offer? So I want you to start with that first. Or you could say, what is the most expensive one-time offer? The one all the way at the very end. Start with that first. Whether it's one-time offer three, four, or even five, you want to start there. So first off, think how many one-time offers do you need? to solve the problem that the person has and then start right there. So what is the ultimate solution essentially? It could be more expensive, it could be the solution or whatever. Write that down right now. Pause this video and write that down, all right? So hopefully by now you have written that down and I wanna give you some examples here. So maybe if you haven't written that down yet, that's totally fine. If hopefully by giving you examples, it will help you uh, kind of get an idea there. So let's say, for example, that you are a tax professional and you want to offer consulting for a high end fee. So you could jot that down. You could also uh, think about doing it for them. Like I said, done for you services, whatever that looks like. So it could be DIY, it could be done for you services, whatever could be the biggest, baddest, last one-time offer. So let's say, for example, that we have four one-time offers and we'll start with one-time offer number four. So what we need to do is we need to figure out, okay, so one-time offer four in this case is the person offering consulting a high-end fee. So what we need to do is from there, you need to move one step back to one-time offer number three. 
So basically one step backwards and think, all right, if someone cannot afford one time offer number four, what is the next best thing? In other words, what we like to do is we like to take a piece of that and move backwards. So what is the next best thing? Perhaps group consulting. So maybe group consulting could be the one-time offer number three and one-time offer number four, maybe that's one-on-one -on -one personal consulting. So number four is one-on-one, -on -one. number three is group consulting, and then move backwards. What, what could be one-time offer number two? Well, let's take a piece of that and move backwards. But you see, by taking a piece and piece and piece and move backwards, what you're doing is you're creating a related congruent one-time offer or funnel. So what's the next, next best thing if people cannot afford group consulting? Well, maybe you take audio recordings from the group consulting. You know, obviously nothing is better than live group consulting, but having those audio recordings is just as good. So maybe that will be one-time offer number two. Then we, we take a step back to one-time offer number one, and we can take a piece of audio recording and perhaps turn it into a book. So they're still getting a piece of that group and consulting or that personal consulting, but it's actually not consulting anymore. It's just a book or a course kind of thing. You get the point. You're basically taking a piece, moving back, taking a piece, moving back, taking a piece, moving back. And then you can even move that into your front end offer as well. And you can do the same with your lead magnet. So if you do that, guess what? Whoever consumes your lead magnet, you're going to attract a very specific person. They're going to definitely want the front end offer because it's a larger piece, you know, of the lead magnet. And the one time offer is a larger piece than the front end offer. Then the one time offer number two is a larger piece than number one, one time offer. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, don't worry. We'll map it out visually so that you can see it in the next video. So like I said, it'll make more sense in video number five, but you know, that should kind of get your mind going a little bit. So that's it. Let's move on to video number five and let me map it out so you can visually see it so that it can really stick in your minds. Welcome to video number five. We're going to talk about how to create a funnel with smart one-time offers. So when it comes to creating a funnel with smart one-time offers, it's super easy to do as long as you've gone through videos one through four. If you've skipped around, it's not, not really going to make sense. So if you've done that, make sure that you go in order so that we can break things down. So in this video, we're going to be mapping out a generic funnel with smart one-time offers by using a flow chart visual map so that you can see how all the pieces of the puzzle fit together. So let's do that now. Okay, so now that you understand kind of a breakdown of the smart OTO and the smart funnel essentially, let's actually map it out. So as you can see here, if we start from the back and move back, so let's say for example, in that example we have OTO4. So OTO4 was one-on-one -on -one consulting. So one-on-one -on -one consulting. Now, obviously, if, if you have a specific product, then we'll actually give you an actual real-life example later down the road. But for now, this is a very general kind of view. So one-on-one -on -one consultant, and then what you do, like I said earlier, is you move back. So you copy that, and essentially the OTO3 is going to be a portion of the one-on-one -on -one consulting. So like I said, group consulting. What is the next best thing, right? So if somebody can't afford one-on-one -on -one consulting, group consulting is the next best thing. So then we move back again. So OTO2. And if somebody cannot afford group consulting, perhaps something a portion of that. So we take a piece, we move back. We take a piece, we move back. Well, in that case, you can have this perhaps as the downsell. 
So that could be OTO4D as in down cell. And then this could actually be OTO3. So as you can see here, one thing is when I discussed the funnel earlier, as you begin to map things out, you realize that certain things should actually be a down cell or an up cell or in different places. And that's why mapping out is so crucial. So OTO3 could be something like audio recordings, and that could be that. You know, we could have something else. It doesn't have to be that. So it could be audio recordings. So that way, if somebody buys the audio recordings, they're thinking, okay, this is all I can afford. I'm going to stop here. But then you get your premium buyers that will be like, okay, you know what? I want to get one-on-one -on -one consulting, right? And then you might have people who say, oh, I can't afford that. And then they're offer this and they're thinking, well, you know, I can't afford one-on-one -on -one consulting, but I can't afford group consulting, right? So we got audio recordings and then maybe over here we have an ebook based on that audio recordings. but not as much. So they're getting double over here, obviously, right? So the next thing we have is OTO2. So we're moving backwards here. So I like to use arrows for progression, but obviously later on, we're going to have to switch the arrows because we're gonna move the other direction, right? So this is just to help me build it out initially. So OTO1, This could be a piece of that, so maybe this could be secret articles or something like that. So it's a piece of that, a piece of that, and then of course we have the front end offer. So the front end offer could be, so we'll do FE for front end offer, and that could be a video course. So after you have finished this, you want to switch the arrows back to the other way. So we would switch the arrows back this way. And that's it. Hello and welcome to video number six. This is Smart OTO Real Example and in relation to products. So now that we've covered how to create a funnel and what it looks like to map it out, Let's talk about some real life examples. Now, because products and services can drastically be different, what we wanna do is we wanna ensure that you understand how to implement this inside of your business. So in this particular video, we're gonna talk about how to create smart one-time offers for products. So if you have a service, you don't have a product, or but if you have a mixture of products and services, I would recommend that you watch this one and the next. But if you do not have products and you're just purely 100% a service-based business, then I would ra rather you skip this video and go to the next, all right? But you might learn a few things by watching this video before watching the next. So let's head over to the flowchart system again and let's find a product and break it down in relation to products. So before we map out a product funnel, what I want to say is that you do not really need to have to have products throughout your funnel, meaning you could have a mixture of different varieties of products, of information products to better educate people about your product and more. So if you're selling, let's say, for example, even an e-commerce physical product, you could use a training course or an ebook or a report as a lead magnet or even a front end offer to get people more educated about the product that you are selling. So just keep that in mind that every single thing in your product funnel does not need to be a product. So if you're doing an e-commerce product, you know, the front end offer, the one time offer and all that does not have to be an e-commerce product. It can be or you could do the lead magnet as a video training, but you have to really think about how, how much does somebody need to be educated about my product before they decide to actually buy 
my product. So you really need to figure out, okay, is that going to be in the lead magnet phase or is that going to be in the actual front end offer? So what I'm saying is don't feel like you have to stick with one specific type of one time offer over and over again throughout your whole funnel. So for example, we'll talk about service based businesses in the future, but you can actually mix and match between a product and a service solely based upon what you think will help somebody become more educated about your product. In addition to that, how will that bring them closer to actually wanting to buy your the biggest, baddest one time offer? All right. So let's do a product here and let's just let's just go ahead and do that. Let's do an e-commerce product. Let's say that we are selling scuba gear and the OTO let's do an OTO three for the sake of simplicity. So scuba gear is going to be basically everything like all in one package kind of thing. All in one package. So this is kind of the everything you get everything in the scuba gear package to help you stay below service for a longer period of time. So if that's the unique selling proposition of your product, then maybe down the line here, you could have a lead magnet that talks about something like how to stay below water for a longer amount of time. So we haven't really figured out, is that going to be our lead magnet? Is that going to be our front end offer or anything like that? What I want you to do is just splat that on the paper. So we've got OTO3 and I would ask you, in addition to that, if we move one step backward or even two step backwards, what do we think would be there? So since the scuba gear is an all in one package, maybe we focus on the scuba mask. So if somebody buys a scuba mask, you can say, Hey, you buy the scuba mask, but I'm going to offer you the scuba gear for like half off or something. So let's go here and let's do, let's do some for simplicity. Let's do OTO two. So this is a, a product. So we'll do this as OTO one and then maybe a front end offer. So this could be a lead magnet. It could be a front end offer, but let's say, for example, we want to make a course to show people how to stay below water for a longer amount of time or whatever unique selling proposition that fulfills this or essentially solves somebody's problem, right? So they go from here, they're looking to stay below water for a longer amount of time. And then maybe you, you present them after that. You say, okay, I've, I've trained you, I've educated you. And then here's a scuba mask that will help you do just that. And then after they buy that, you could say, you know, we are, we normally sell the scuba gear all in one package for, you know, such and such price, but you're going to get 50% off if you buy it right now kind of thing. So they're already in the frame of mind, thanks to this part here, that they are well educated. They bought the course so that they're well educated. And because you educated them, you have essentially gained their trust. And because they trust you, they're more likely to buy your funnel. So that's something that you could do for an e-commerce type product. Now, let's say it's a information product. So let's say that uh, we won't do a service and we can do a service in the next video, but let's say for example, that this is a product. So maybe we could do scuba diving training, advanced training, and then we could do scuba diving. So OTO2 is the biggest, baddest bonus that we can offer. And that's the advanced training. So maybe OTO one could be scuba diving, not basic training, but maybe intermediate training. And then maybe at that point, the front end offer 
could be scuba diving basic training could be the front end offer so think about it for a second I move backwards and this is more advanced sort of less advanced and a lot more less advanced so now when we move back from here forward it's gonna be somebody comes in they're interested in learning basic training and they're still new so maybe you provide them with intermediate training you say okay we normally offer this at 200 bucks but today you'll get access to it for a hundred bucks so after you complete your basic training you'll have access to this immediately afterwards and then so on and so forth so that's what I would do for a product but you kinda get the gist here this is fairly simple as long as you start with this as the top level and then move down so in this case I kinda use the skill level from top middle bottom so that when we go from here to here it's a progression upwards right so you could use that method you could use the method I taught you before you could use any method but hopefully that gives you a better idea on how to essentially create your OTO funnel okay so this is video number seven and we're gonna talk about similar to what we talked about in the previous video but we're gonna map out a product funnel that is just for services so let's head on over to the flow chart and let's find a service and break it down okay so let's use the previous example with the scuba diving but instead of a product or a course or information product or something like that let's talk about a service so let's say for example that you offer a scuba diving service or a training so you really need to figure out what category does that fit in does it fit in where you're training somebody does it fit in maybe uh, tourism or entertainment you need to figure that out first and write that down so in this case we could do scuba diving one on one consulting so that could be a one-on-one -on -one personal training kind of thing and let's delete these two here and let's say this will be OTO 3 and with the service-based business you could do that and then you could do a downsell so somebody could not afford that they could have something like a scuba diving group consulting and that can be OTO3 we'll call that downsell so a downsell is basically if if somebody says no to this they are then presented with this right so that's basically how it works now how how can we best ultimately sell this OTO3 here well the best way to sell a service could be through a product an information product an ebook a video course something like that so if your ultimate goal is to get them here then similarly as the previous funnel you could use a video course so that could be a scuba diving course we'll say video course and if we take a snippet of the course over here this could be a scuba diving port and then we can move back again over here and this could be something like a scuba diving checklist like a diagnostic test or something so let's see OTO 3 2 1 front end offer so I'm gonna actually do just OTO 2 because in this case we could solve their problems via this so we're gonna do OT1 or OT01 we're gonna do actually instead of a report we're gonna do an ebook and that can be front end and that could be anything you want you could do something like the top 10 reasons why blah 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 uh, you fail in scuba diving and then you could have the done for you service over here that talks about how to succeed or how to avoid these failures or whatever so this could be the of course the lead magnet which is the freebie that you give away for free in exchange for somebody's email address so that you can communicate with them over and over again so that can be it for a service-based business 
So essentially, somebody wants you to take them by the hand and walk them through the process. So another service-based business could be done for you. I mean, essentially everything that is service-based business is done for you. You're doing it for them. Even a plumber. Um, I've actually purchased from a plumber before and they have had one-time offers as well. But just keep in mind, you don't want to, with service-based business, you want to avoid having, forcing people. For example, I think the plumber that helped us actually said, okay, if you buy this, um, you can buy this extra package into this like monthly gold club or something and get a 10% discount. And it didn't really make a lot of sense because what he was doing was he was doing bump sales. He wasn't actually doing one-time offers or anything like that. So in certain service-based businesses, you really have to think, is this really right for me or not? Because some things like plumbing, you know, may not, people may not be open to that. But generally, things like even scuba diving or information products, people tend to be more open on that. So I hope that gives you a better view of the different ways to go ahead and create a funnel for a service-based business. So remember, mix and match. If you can best educate the person before they get to your service, before they get to your product, that is a more ideal situation. Hello and welcome to video number eight. And just wanna say congrats at this point in time, you have reached the end of this video course. So to ensure that you know you use everything you have learned, we're gonna talk about shopping cart systems that will actually help you achieve this goal and set up the one-time offers properly via automated systems so that whenever somebody buys your front-end offer, they will be automatically presented with the OTO one or OTO two, three, four, five, or whatever, how many one-time offers that you have. Now, there are many out there, but here are just to name a few. There's jvzoo.com, there's zaxa.com, and there's infusionsoft.com. I will say that Infusionsoft is a lot more complex, so zaxa.com typically is a good shopping cart system. jvzoo.com as well. Now, in order for this to stay true, you need a shopping cart that can do one-time offers that appear after the previous purchase. We're not talking about one-time offers that are added to the front end initial offer. So you want to make sure that you do your due diligence and make sure that this is the type that they are compatible with because some shopping carts will actually say that, but in reality, it's a very different one-time offer. So that way it helps you kind of differentiate between the two. So I hope this helps and just make sure that you go take action, map out your own sales funnel, find the right system that is for you and go out there and conquer.